and welcome back to Brampton Insight. If you're new here, I'm Jenny and this is Greg. Today we're going to go through something a bit different and we're going to show you a day in the life of two professional Brampton players. We're also going to go through some Q&As and some bloopers throughout the video, so make sure you stay tuned for those. So let's get our day started. It's just before nine o'clock in the morning and we're heading out for the first session of our day. We're trying to get up and out by nine every day to keep some sort of normality and structure to our day as we'd usually be training nine till 11. So our first session of the day has got many different components. So let's get to it. <music> A nearby park which we found recently. Now the benefits of this is it's got a nice springy floor so it protects our joints when we're jumping up and down. Now for skipping we're gonna do some quick fire questions to make it a little bit more interesting. So let's have a look how Jenny did. City or countryside? City. Phone call or text? Phone call. Asian food or Italian food? Italian food. Pasta or pizza? Pizza. Cardio or weights? Weights. Online shopping or shopping in store? Online shopping. Most important in a partner, intelligent or funny? Intelligent. Oh, holiday or new clothes? Holiday. Same holiday destination or try somewhere new? Try somewhere new. Look good or feel good? Feel good. Sensible or crazy? Crazy. Lastly, Netflix or YouTube? YouTube. Steak or pizza? Steak. £3,000 a week for life or £3 million right now? £3 million quid. Stuck on a desert island with Donald Trump or Boris Johnson? What's that? Man United or Man City? United. Best all-time great, Lin Dan or Lee Chong Wei? Lin Dan. Would you rather be five foot tall or eight foot tall? Ooh, eight foot would be good, good smash. Luck or talent? Pardon? Lucky or talented? Lucky. Uh, talent. TV shows, 24 or Suits? Ooh, 24. Zhang Nan or Kevin Sanjaya? Oh, Kevin's got more flair. Six sons or six daughters? Oh, six sons. Nearly 42. Be, be able to run 100 miles an hour or fly 10 miles an hour? I'd love to fly. Just on the way back from the park now, we've finished the first part of our morning session, which as you saw was a run to the park, some skipping, and also some fast feet. And we've included our skipping program in the description below if you want to have a go at that. Now we're heading back home to do our lower body weight session, which is the final part of the morning session. And we're going to show you guys some of the exercises that we do. morning session now time for some lunch so we've just had lunch and now we're going to answer some of your questions so the first question we've had comes from Harry Peters who has asked what are our goals for the YouTube channel so we decided on three main goals. First one was that we want to help grow the sport of badminton. It's a sport we've been involved with for many, many years, both since we were about seven or eight years old. So we've obviously grown up and loved the sport a long time. So we want to help other people to love it as much as we do and help them learn. And kind of leading on to our second goal, we want to teach them some new innovative methods that they might not have seen before. And one example that we've done from the lockdown already is the net spins with the towel hanging over our island here. We haven't seen that before. And our third goal was we want to really enjoy the process, we want to have fun doing it. For me personally, we, we spoke about at the start was that 
I wanted to get better at pub public speaking. And when we actually were going to start the YouTube channel, we sat down and we said, I'll be the camera woman and you can be the coach on the screen yeah. at all times. And I thought to myself, well, how am I going to get better at public speaking if I'm just like kind of hiding away behind the camera? We had three goals for the channel and that's my one personal goal that I've set myself during this so far. Mm. So the next question is from Dave M. He was asked, are you doing many takes? Yes, that's a simple answer to that, isn't it? Um, yeah. We're getting better, but probably for each, say, five minute video, we're spending about an hour filming. So I think, as you said earlier, like it's not that natural to us speaking to camera as it is like human to human, like like we are doing now. Because yeah. um, we do that every day of our lives. And for me, coaching as well, like I've always just coached obviously humans and not on the camera so it's very different and I also like to waffle a little bit and we're trying to keep our videos short and concise yeah. so I'm trying to get rid of that waffling um, anyway I won't waffle anymore um, but yeah like takes wise when we're doing it outside there's loads of outside noise like people jet washing the cars like bin men coming we're actually around here now <laughs> yeah bin men coming like the neighbors getting parcels and just vans so yeah there's definitely been lots of bloopers hello and welcome back to band <laughs> 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 oh I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 no. 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 <laughs> we can adjust to make sure we neutralise. It's shuttle throws. <laughs> the last exercise we're going to do is shoulder throws. <laughs> so, following on from our Cha Cha Slide wall plank challenge earlier on in the week. We're going to look at eight shoulder exercises for badminton players <laughs> to help you improve your game. Now. <laughs> so the next question has come from Frank W who has asked, Besides training and YouTube, what are you guys doing to keep entertained? Well, we're spending quite a lot of time on the training and on the YouTube, so we don't have much time other than that. Um, but we are having a regular five o'clock like games hour, aren't we, to keep competitive. Yeah. So we're playing some cards, we're playing Scrabble, and uh, we're also playing quite a lot of Mario Kart on the Wii, which does get very heated. Come on! And we're also trying to spend some time reading, aren't we, and yeah. making fresh meals rather than just grabbing something on the go, which yeah. we quite often do uh, in our daily lives because I'm busy rushing off to coach at Nottingham Trent and you're busy with various other things. I'm just leading on into a question about diet. Can you provide a bit more of like an insight into what we eat, maybe people out there who are wondering? Yeah, we've had a few questions on that. Um, I, I could talk about diet for ages. Um, you know, we've had lots of nutrition help and, and there's lo loads of different strategies and I think the main thing is it's individual for you. So for me, I'm burning up to 2000 calories in some sessions, um, but you've got to tailor what you eat in, accord in accordance with that. So I probably eat about 3000 calories a day, yeah. um, real food, you know, enough of it. Timing's got to be right. Like we've definitely gone wrong on that. Definitely in competition in the past, uh, but even training, you know, you need to work out what's best for you. Yeah. I've also recently started a cycle of creatine monohydrate, whilst it's a good time during this kind of physical block which we see ourselves in due to the yeah. circumstances uh, to really focus on the physical and I think creatine is definitely going to help me. Like I've read a lot about it, it's a widely researched uh, supplement. Uh, I've read somewhere it's used by over 90% of summer Olympic athletes and I've seen in the badminton world Victor's been talking about it recently on social media so yeah that helps explosive strength um, and you can just mix it in anything so it's quite easy to take but I won't waffle on and go on about that but if you do want any any advice on nutrition extra just comment in the comments section below any questions or send us a direct message and we'll be happy to help. So that moves us on to our next question which has come all the way from Finland from Nana who's asked what are your guys worst sporting injuries? Wow. 
Do you want to kick us off? Yeah, unfortunately, there's quite a few to list, but I think we've definitely, between the two of us, got a couple of like standout ones. Yeah. Uh, I know for me, I'm actually just recovering from an injury. So throughout February, the whole month of February, most of March, I was on crutches uh, with a stress response in my foot. I had a similar injury about 18 months ago in my other foot where again I was on crutches for around four weeks. I think actually both of those injuries have been really really good for me in a weird way. They kind of allowed me to look at my functional movements and see that I wasn't actually that strong in some areas and it gave me that chance of a four week period or five week period off the court to really Mm. work on those. And This lockdown period's come at a good time for you as well because you'd have had to probably pull out of a couple of tournaments. Yeah I think I was planning on pulling out of around four or five tournaments and it meant I was actually kind of excited at the very start of lockdown because I was happy that I wasn't missing out on any of these tournaments but obviously sounds, by this stage sounds bad, but... yeah by this stage I'm now just yeah, wouldn't think that anymore yeah. and what about you what would you say your worst sporting injury is mine's definitely got to be when I broke my leg um, at the age of 12 playing football so a long time ago but it was quite a quite a tough time. It was a bad break of my tibia and my fibula. Yeah. Um, and at the time, I didn't really know. Uh, they kind of said they weren't sure if I'd be able to even play sport again. So kind of coming through that makes you really take a step back and appreciate like the simple things in life, like just being able to get up and do things for yourself. And I kind of like really have that respect now for for the, the people that do struggle with that, like on a permanent basis. And it also made me think about my rehab in a different way in my sporting career now. Like. Yeah. The rehab from the exercises I was given when I was 12 from the physio, I probably didn't fully understand the importance of them. So now every injury I've had as a result, like I definitely make sure I do the rehab. I think it's made me stronger mentally, but unfortunately I do still struggle with it when playing and training every day at the moment. So yeah, that's definitely my worst sporting injury for sure. Um, so that brings us on to our last question um, from Cjar, who has said, I've seen you wearing lots of Victor kit. Are you sponsored by them? Yes, we are. Uh, we've been sponsored by Victor for, we're just coming up to our two year mark now. They're actually coming up with some really cool new technologies that mm. we're not seeing from other badminton brands. Mm. One example of this is they've just launched their free core technology. Mm. Um, Here's one we prepared earlier. Yeah, so oh. this is in all Victor, in all brackets, sorry, worldwide, there is as you guys will know, wooden handle, whereas Victor have just launched this free core technology, which is made of like a synthetic handle. Another example of like Victor's like innovation is these tops that we're wearing right now. Yeah. This is from their new Eco line, and all of these tops are made from 100% sustainable recycled materials. And I think that for every top that they sell, one euro is being donated to a charity called One Earth, One Ocean. Just yeah, yeah. we had one that. comment about where you can buy stuff. So in the link below, we will put a description to TRMU website that are currently stocking these tops. So go, go buy them. So that's it for our questions today. We did get a lot of questions asking us about specific shots, which we've written down, and we'll make sure we get those done when we're back on court. And if you have anything else you'd like us to film, let us know in the comment section below. So it's now just gone 2 p.m. and we're heading out for our second session of the day. We usually start in our afternoons by doing about 40 minutes of our daily non-negotiables, we call them, which things we do every day without fail to keep us sharp. So this is wall hitting, our shoulder rehab for our strengthening and our reaction training, all of which we've done videos on. So if you're not sure what I mean by them, go check them out. And then we go on to a CV session, which is usually a bike, a run or a Tabata, which we're going to show you today. So let's get back to it. It is a little bit cold outside, so we've come inside to do our Tabata. Um, Tabatas are high intensity training with sh- short bursts of exercise, but very little rest. So we've got four exercises which we're going to put up here for you. So let's get to it. There are lots of exercises that you can do with that. We have six different programs of all different exercises to, just to keep it fresh. Now Grace going to take you through some recovery that we do at the end of each day to make sure that we're ready for the following day's training. 
Okay, so it's just a couple of things we'd make sure we got in for the rest of the day now. Firstly, we'd have a recovery snack. So a favourite of ours is pitter and hummus. And we often have quite a lot of protein smoothies at the moment. But as we said over lunch, it's really important that we get that recovery snack in so we're good for the next day. And then lastly, we do some massage therapy and then stretching. So for the massaging, we actually have this device, which you can get off Amazon. We'll probably put a link in the description below for you. But basically vibrates and there's different heads on it. I would do my quads, my shoulders, anything. And we'll do this just whilst watching the telly or something like that, maybe some video analysis. And then we'll have a little stretch after. So again, we're good to go for the next day. So that concludes our day in the life video. Really hope you've enjoyed it and got an insight not only into, into us and what we're doing during lockdown to make sure we're better when we get back and forth, but also hopefully you've got to know us a little bit more as people. So if you haven't already, please do smash that subscribe button and hopefully see you in the next video on Sunday.